Uh, ben, Prime Minister Netanyahu basically walked out of the Blinken meeting on Friday and refused to agree to a pause and said so publicly. Uh, there could have been ways to finesse it, but he did not do that. And Blinken then had to go on and meet with the Arabs. So first, to the point that we know that the president was on the phone with Netanyahu today, this cannot be a happy relationship right now. Blinken was asking for a couple of things. Better targeting, he said that publicly, um, not using those bunker buster bombs in the heavily populated Gaza City area, and, and including near hospitals and ambulances. And the U.S. wanted to send smaller munitions. Where do we stand here? I mean, it's pretty clear, Andrea, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, is going to do uh, what he wants to do here. Um, and, and look, this has been obviously the pattern with him with multiple U.S. presidents, uh, you know, President Clinton, certainly President Obama. Uh, when I was in office, oftentimes uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is more than happy to ignore the advice or the recommendations of the U.S. I think what the Biden administration has been banking on is if they gave a more full embrace of Prime Minister Netanyahu in this very difficult time for the Israeli people and very volatile time in the region, that that might allow them uh, to have a bit more leverage. Uh, but I think the message that Prime Minister Netanyahu is sending is actually, no, I'm going to do what uh, I want to do here. Now, the challenge for the U.S. is, number one, I, I think the U.S. is trying to negotiate the release of some of these hostages using channels through Qatar, through Egypt, um, and believing that uh, the negotiation may be the better way to try to secure the release of hostages, who some of whom may be in that tunnel network. And so it's very difficult to, to, to rescue them through uh, military operations. Um, and, and then I also think the U.S. is obviously concerned, and I'm sure Secretary Blinken is getting an earful of concern from Arab leaders uh, about the risk of escalation on the West Bank, obviously about the Palestinian death toll in Gaza. Uh, and about the potential risks of escalation across the region. Uh, and therefore, a humanitarian pause could both allow for the alleviation of some suffering in Gaza, but also demonstrate that there is a, a concerted effort uh, to address the concerns that, that people have in the region. But thus far, it seems like the gap between the U.S. and, and Israel uh, on this remains. And acknowledging fully the horror and savagery of the Hamas attack that started all of this, what the U.S. is arguing is that this is counterproductive and not the best way to get at the terrorists who are in the tunnels. Yeah, I mean, I think there, there's no question, obviously, uh, from the U.S. standpoint that, you know, Hamas's horrific attack initiated this cycle of violence. Uh, I think the concern is about the loss of Palestinian life in Gaza, which could escalate significantly even from what's already taken place uh, as the IDF moves into the, the, the city. Um, and, 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 you know, I think what the U.S. is trying to do is indicate, look, Bill Burns is there. Uh, we can share intelligence. We can try to identify where these hostages are. Perhaps we could try to help you be more targeted in your pursuit of Hamas and its military capabilities so it's not the kind of broad-based military campaign that we've seen. Uh, and that's where I think there just continues to be a difference uh, with the Israeli government. 